Hey everybody, CES 2024 is currently in full swing and we are starting to get information on the new TVs. So I kind of wanted to go through and just pick out the five best TVs or at least the ones that seem the most interesting. And to be fully frank, this year does seem a little on the boring side. There's not a whole lot uh, pushing the envelope this year. It is kind of a minor update year which is as expected i've been saying that for a little while now um so it's kind of playing out as expected however with that said there are a few that um do kind of stand out that i will be you know happy to review and looking forward to checking out so before i get into the actual models let me just go over a little bit of information about panel updates so going over to flat panels hd they have reports here on the new updated MLA, it's being called MLA Gen 2 or MLA 2.0, uh, Meta Technology 2.0, whatever you want to call it. Uh, second generation of MLA-based WRGB OLED TVs. And you can see 3,000 nits of peak brightness. Um, I think we kind of already expected that. Um, that was kind of leaked out also. However, it has been confirmed that, you know, at the native very, 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 very blue white point, uh, very, very far from accurate on a 3% window, uh, it can hit 3000 nits. Now in you know a real world scenario, it's gonna be much lower than that. Um, you know, So the LG G4, for example, uh, is gonna be using this. And do note that uh, this is about or the the actual panel and the technology itself, which means this comes from LG Display, whereas LG Electronics is the one that does the actual TVs. So this information from LG Display is just saying that the panel itself is capable of hitting a peak of 3000 nits um, that has been confirmed so far. And then once it's actually in a TV, uh, that will change, especially with uh, you know, different white point and circumstances. The other, you know, information that comes out about this panel update uh, is that they've achieved improved color brightness of up to 1500 nits, 114% brighter than conventional OLED, which is a little confusing to a lot of people. Um, what that actually means, that does not mean your red, green, and blue colors are gonna be 1500 nits. Uh, what they're trying to state here is that with a white peak of 1500 nits, which is the combination of uh, the white subpixel, red, green, and blue, um, at that level of 1500 nits, that they're stating 114% brighter uh, than conventional OLEDs for the color brightness. Now, and when they say 114%, that could mean 1.14, which would only be a technical 14% increase, or they could actually mean it's you know, a full like doubling and then 14% extra. So kind of misleading in what they're meaning here. Uh, basically uh, with a G3, for example, I think it's around 680 nits or so uh, is where you lose out color volume. Um, so, and that's at, you know, fully calibrated D65, uh, whereas this 1500 nits is not. Uh, so I might, what I would like to see is with the G4, uh, them get either two or close to a thousand nits before that white subpixel really takes over. Um, that that would be a nice increase to see. So the the numbers that they give here don't really mean much. The other big news is this detail enhancer algorithm, um, which regardless of what it says here, uh, it's supposed to help with some of the problems that were near black. Uh, such as like chrominance overshoot or color banding posterization, uh, things like that. Um, so we will have to test that as well uh, once like the G4 is out. And it's available in 55, 65, 77, and 83 inch sizes. We already knew that one. Um, and then Panasonic is going to be using it on their Z95A over in uh, Europe, uh, but only at 55 and 65 inch sizes. So now we move over to uh, Samsung side of things. Again, uh, at Flat Panels HD, check the article if you want all the information. Um, so 2024 QD OLED, it's called Gen 3. Uh, and again, same thing, 3000 nits. They're not trying to beat each other by 100 nits anymore, apparently. So 
So they're claiming parity here. Uh, again, this is from Samsung Display, not electronics. So this is about the just the base panel itself and what they're claiming it can do. And they're also claiming uh, 300 nits of full field brightness. So that would be um, honestly one of the more important aspects of what's claimed here versus the 3000 nits peak. Uh, because hopefully the 300 nits will actually be achieved full screen at you know an accurate setting. Whereas we know that the 3000 nits will not. So um, with... QD OLED being a true RGB display, when you increase brightness, you're increasing the brightness of the red, green, and blue pixel. So therefore you do get a larger color volume. Uh, they're also claiming improved durability. Again, 2X, what, that's the same thing they said last year, uh, whatever that is supposed to mean. Um, better panel uniformity. So there has been claims about panel uniformity uh, dropping with Gen 2. I think and not what I have seen uh, on the many dozens of samples that I have seen that the range of uh, not so great to really, really good uniformity and the overall average has remained consistent between Gen 1 and Gen 2. I have seen some pretty bad Gen 1s. I've seen some really good Gen 2s. And then I've seen really good Gen 1s and some not so good Gen 2s as well. So I would not say that there has been much of a difference between Gen 1 and Gen 2 for panel uniformity. However, them taking note and if they actually do improve the overall average of uniformity, of course, that's a good thing. Um, and then for the monitor side of things, they're increasing pixel density so that they can get down to 4K at 32 inches, uh, which is something that I would like to be interested in. However, when it comes to monitors, there are other issues that uh, generally are there that's not for this video. Uh, and that's kind of about it for, you know, just the announcement of the Gen 3 panels. So they, you know, there's a uh, rumor going around that they're not available until quarter three of 2024. Uh, according to uh, Stop the FOMO, I asked him and he said that he asked Shrog of Samsung Display and said that they are available now. So does now mean that they have been available for the last few months and they are what is going to be in say the samsung s95d we don't know for sure uh what has been quoted for the s95d as far as its brightness increase of 20 percent was certainly doable with gen 2 panels so i'm kind of leaning towards that it's going to be gen 2 panels until they run out and then they will switch to gen 3 and it's just going to be softer restricted to be the same regardless and it would be a panel lottery, um, but we will have to wait and see. So no new sizes at all for QD OLED Gen 3 as far as TVs are concerned. Uh, again, the 32 and 27 inch monitors where 32 inch is 4K and 27 is 1440p. Um, and all right, let's move on to the actual TV models themselves. So I can close this window and let's get started. Before we get started with the five best TVs of 2024 CES, or at least the ones that are most interesting to me, let's start with the biggest disappointment. And that is the S95D. Uh, as you can see here, it is the one over here on the right. And it is a matte coating that has been uh, said by multiple people to be very similar to the coating on the Samsung frame. This, in my opinion, is a big mistake and is going to turn away many, many people who would have otherwise been interested in buying this TV. A matte coating on an OLED just does not mix. Um, so if you were to back up out of this image a little bit and see the room better, you would see that there were these uh, fake windows uh, equally spaced to the left and the right of these TVs, with the right one being the new S95D, the left one being last year's S95C. And with a typical QD OLED without this coating, uh, the light hits it and kind of, you do see the object of light. So whether it's a window or a lamp or whatever, however, it does darken it and it contains it to you know, just basically the size of that light source. With an anti-glare coating, 
sure it may not be as you know defined of you know what it is that's causing the reflection however it is going to spread and disperse that light across a larger area and give a more of a hazy uh, kind of low contrasty look as you can see in this image and why i am a i am just completely against matte coatings uh, regardless of the panel type because if you're watching a dark scene it doesn't matter what tv it is it will not really be enjoyable to watch in a room with light hitting the screen regardless of the technology or how bright the tv is or anything else because it's dark scene if it's a brighter scene then again it doesn't really matter that much but at some point during the day or a day cycle uh the sun is going to go down or your lamps are going to get turned off or your curtains are will close or something and it'll get darker and now you just have a coating across the screen that is just going to impact the overall performance of the display. So between that and the fact that the S95D does still have the One Connect box, which has been the biggest cause of concern for the S95C, uh, kind of just scratches it off the list of really being interested in that TV at all. So I'll still test it, I'll still review it, um, but so far things are not looking good for the S95D. But now if we move on to number five, uh, that is the Samsung QN90D, which there has not been a lot said about this display. Uh, they're really not seemingly pushing uh, the envelope when it comes to these, which may not be like the worst thing. You know, it kind of is what it is. It's a LCD based mini LED TV with quantum dot color. And last year with the Q uh, QN90C, it's kind of controversial because uh, most of the like the 55 and up through 85 inch sizes, they had switched to an ADS panel. Now, again, as going in line with what I just said, uh, that's actually a good thing because it means that there isn't really any coding on the display. So looking at this image uh, of the QN90D, it appears that it is still an ADS panel because you can see it's a nice, clean, glossy display. Uh, there's no rainbows from the reflections being shot across the screen uh, and all you know anything that would be distracting. So this does look to be an ADS panel. And if we look at this image of it, we do see an outline of ghosting here. However, we learned last year with the QN90C that when the tone mapping option were to be set to active, which is going to over brighten everything, uh, that's where it would bloom more. But if you set it to the more accurate setting of static, then blooming would be less noticeable. And then also compared to the VA counterparts, the blooming that is there is more neutral gray in color. Whereas the VA panels that come from CSOT have more of a blue tint to the blooming uh, and is more visible even if it is a smaller bloom. So I would say that them keeping the ADS panels for the QN90 series is a plus. And I was kind of worried that they wouldn't do that, but I'm happy to see that they did. So that's why it makes number five on my list. Moving on now to the LG C4. It may be a little surprising to see this on the list. However, again, there's not a whole lot to be looking forward to in 2024. Uh, however, the C4 is generally a pretty solid option year to year, or the C series rather. And with the C4, they're not marketing or advertising any real brightness increases or major improvements. Uh, it is going to get a new A9 processor plus 144 hertz support. Um, however, they are stating that there will be some brightness increase, and especially at the 42 and 48, this is the first time that they've said that they've increased the brightness on those sizes. Uh, so that is always good to see. Now, will it compete with the S90 series? Uh, kind of doubtful. We will have to see. So the C3 was around 800 nit peaks and around 150 something full field. So I would prefer if they could get full field up closer to like 180 or 200 nits. Um, but they may also increase peaks to around 900. Uh, we will have to wait and see on that. Um, you know, I, I kind of question their ability to do that. You can see that the build is the same 
as the C3, which was the same as the C2. Uh, and just, you know, it depends on image retention, efficiency, heat management, all those kind of things. Um, but, you know, a, a decent brightness increase will at least make it a little more competitive. Uh, and again, with the smaller sizes claiming brightness increases, uh, that's why you know, I, I really look forward to it because the 4248s have not gotten any real improvements since they came out. Moving on to number three, we have Sony's 2024 Master Series. Uh, I kind of say it that way because there's been a lot of clickbait about this TV or rather this prototype that's not even a real TV yet uh, because it's a LCD with mini LED backlight and they are not leaving OLED. There will be new OLEDs for 2024 and the A95L came out in October of 2023. It is the 2024 TV. Now it is possible still that they could update it with an M series uh, or an M model moniker. However, realistically speaking, A95L is a 2024 TV and their overall flagship regardless of technology. And that's why like when this prototype was shown off, of course they don't show it against the A95L, they showed it against the step down a ADL WRGB. So we can expect that there will be updated, you know, A80, you know, whatever they want to call it if they change the name for the WRGB. And I also predict that there will be a step down model for QD OLED. Maybe it's an A90M, something along those lines. Uh, but I expect to see that. And of course those will outperform any LCD. But that said, there's been a lot of buzz around this. Uh, again, it's a prototype mini LED backlit LCD. And while it may bring excellent improvements to LCD technology, it still will not be an OLED. Uh, so critical viewing, dark scene viewing, dark room viewing, and overall contrast will still be better on OLED. But, you know, that again, not everybody wants an OLED. So for the people that do want LCD, this could be a very good option and what these uh, images are showing is with you know just basically the backlight working uh, so you can see the improvements over the prior model uh, with when it's you know all stripped away and so you can just see how the backlight is working this is basically all they've really shown about it uh, so there's you know, potential here for a pretty solid lcd based tv however it is going to be you know, at the mercy of the quality of the panel because they don't make the panel. So in the 65 and 75 inch, if they're still using CSOT or TCL panels, then it still may not be that great compared to like the 85 inch, uh, which in the past they have gotten from AUO and has been a better panel with better contrast. Now, moving on to number two. So the second, you know, most interesting or best option is the Samsung S90D. I already explained why the 95 is a disappointment. And the S90C was my number one recommendation in 2023. So the S90D, as long as they keep the pricing in check and the performance even just slightly exceeds the S90C, this will be a great model to be looking at. What you do need to keep in mind is the 83 inch as seen here is going to be a WRGB OLED from LG, not a quantum dot OLED. And the same with the 42 and 48 versions of the S90D. These are also WRGB OLEDs from LG. However, it is interesting to see the lineup expand. Uh, I would have liked to see these WRGB models uh, named the S85D though, since they are going to have an S85D lineup uh, for 55 through 77 that are also WRGB. Um, so it would have, I think, been better for the consumer to know what they were getting if they were all named the same. All right, so now moving on to what I think is the most interesting and best TV shown at CES of 2024 is the LG G4, which is gonna be really surprising considering you know, I kind of rated the G3 like fourth or fifth uh, last year. Um, but the G4 does seem to be bringing some decent improvements. And this is a good opportunity for them to try and close the gap with QD OLED. 
Now, the color performance is not going to match or exceed QD OLED. I don't expect that at all. However, I do expect it to be plenty bright, and we now have it in 83 inches, which is something QD OLED does not offer. I am also hearing uh, that it seems pretty confident that the 83s are going to be a new updated panel, not the old 2021 based panel of the 83s that have been in everything else. So, you know, hopefully uh, uniformity is going to greatly improve and we should see a good bump in overall performance. Even if it matches the G377 of last year at 83 inches, that will be plenty. Um, it's also going to have the new, the all new A11 processor and also between what I discussed earlier with the improvements to near black uh, combined with this new processor that should be bringing you know, less color banding and posterization. You know, there's a lot of potential here for the G4 to really, like I said, close the gap with QD OLED uh, and also be in a larger size. So for me, the 83 inch G4 is the most interesting model shown at CES of 24. Now there is a now new included stand option for the 55 and 65 inch models that does not lean back uh, so aggressively like the previous stand that was optional. So this is a good you know, uh, thing to now have at least as an option for you. However, it is only at 55 and 65, whereas the 77 and 83 and 97 will still only be wall mounts included in the box. Uh, it does appear um, that this seems to be in similar, you know, size and location, and I'm assuming the build is the same. So this stand should work on the previous models, you know, like the G3 or the, uh, possibly the G2 as well. Uh, and, you know, once we get a real good look at these, especially the 83 inch, I want to see the uniformity, vertical banding, uh, any issues near black. And as long as there's been solid improvements, uh, I very well could see myself buying an 83 inch G4 this year. So I'm kind of hopeful for that. Uh, again, it's not going to have more color gamut, so it's still going to be limited to P3 in color. Uh, we do expect uh, probably some kind of notable improvement in color luminance and then just overall luminance. Um, so not the biggest issue to not get the increase in gamut. Um, however, that still would be nice to have and does leave, you know, a, a big advantage for, or not big, but a reasonable advantage for QD OLED having that increased color gamut. Uh, but other than that, as long as everything else improves, uh, I can see the G4 being you know, the most improved option compared to the G3. So that's why I put it at number one on my list. Let me know down below what your pick is for best TV of CES 2024. And you know, I've been rambling for about 23 minutes. Didn't expect it to go this long. I thank you all for listening and watching if you made it this far. And uh, I will talk to you all again soon. And hope this video helped you out. And have a good one, everyone.